present to you James B. Madonna and the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Okay, it happens to be Saturday afternoon, October the 4th, 2014, a very mild, balmy autumn, excuse me, sorry about that, Mr. Uh, hey, uh, Mr. Willie's Mr. Up, Anonymous. Mr. Willie's crooked. Is he really? Yes, he is. For really? Yeah. For real? Oh, he got, he got hit. Thank you. Oh. Willie Jr., Billy Bones Jr. That's right. Yes, it is a <laughs> nice temperature. I think about, what, 70? It's supposed Degree. to be 72, but uh, I just heard it was 68 a few, uh, about an hour ago. That's okay. I got no problems with 68 degrees. Doors open. Yeah, or natural. We're, we're all here. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to Uncensored Hard Hitting Truth. I'm your host. James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21, and I would like to introduce a disembodied spirit voice you hear in the background, my illustrious longtime co-host and mentor and the founder of Newsletter Censored in 1977, the one and only the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. How are you feeling this week, sir? Good, but today is the type of day you want to take a nap. It's raining. I have no problem with overcast day. I, it's got that nice, uh, uh, nice eerie, mysterious, gothic, uh, Halloweeny look to it. You know, with the fog and the, and the frog and uh, oh, I told the gentleman uh, last night uh, when I uh, did video for the party. The guy w it was he was the man that cooked lots of smoked pulled pork. I that, saw it. That I ate. Quite a bit of. He's, and he was at the party. He's from South Carolina. And I told him I got a great name for a new barbecue restaurant. You can call, you can put up a big sign with uh, like a cartoon uh, uh, image of a bullfrog and you can call it Ribbits. Get it? Rib. -its. Rib. Like as in baby back, a rack of ribs. Ribbits. The sound that the frog makes. <laughs> <laughs> he like shook his head and like. He might. He says people might get on my get on my back for that. I said, yeah, but it's clever. You gotta admit, it's clever. And you call what the if he sold frog legs too. And you call all those poor bullfrogs in wheelchairs. You know, you know they have to go on social security disability. Oh my god. You know? But anyway, uh, and then the blackboard special can be the Gorilla Grill, and your sampler platter. I would call it Gorilla My Dreams. <laughs> Where the hell do you get gorilla with with barbecue? Gorilla grill, cause it, it has a nice ring to it. Gorilla grill, gorilla grill. Well, now we're thinking that they're making gorilla meat. No, you have a you have a, a cartoon you know, it's of bad a. enough the Chinese are eating dogs. You put Come a on. you put a gorilla with a chef hat on his head. Oh my God! Speaking of, I want to thank my good friend Jimmy Donovan. Uh, for inviting me and, and having me uh, video his party. Uh, the annual uh, Jimmy Donovan's Fall Bash 2014. And this time it was at the uh, Colonial Bar in Richfield, New Jersey. Mm. And I had a great time. Of course, people got wasted la later on in the party. And there's nothing like filming wasted people making fools of themselves. It's ne Pure, natural, unrehearsed, ad lib comedy. I hope they ate before. Natural comedy. I don't. I didn't. No, no. They were drinking first. Oh Lord. Yeah, and, and there were there were many people that needed the services of my good friend, the the, the, the premier uh, personal trainer and dietary consultant of the Northeast, Mr. Mario Petrus, which I say hello to and salute. And they needed it because you can see that obesity is definitely an epidemic in the United States. Oh, yeah. Without a doubt. But I had a great time. And the pulled pork was outstanding. All the food, of course, that Jimmy Donovan has catered is outstanding. Uh, they had, had the uh, chicken breast franchise, eggplant parmesan. They had a beautiful big salad with the fresh mozzarella balls in there. 
you know, the white ones, big salad, um, a lot of great food, a lot of great food. So I, I was, I had a great time. It was outside in front of the bar in the parking lot, so I was feeling pretty chilly until ah. until the crowd finally built up outside, and then the body heat warmed things up. But every time they went inside the bar to get a refill, I got chilly again. Now, I mean, not chilly con not carne. Not chilly con carne, yeah. yeah okay. you, know, you know, chilly as in, as in cold. Oh, cool, man, cool. Because I didn't bring a jacket. Ah. Because when I left the house, it was nice and cozy, and I didn't think. I just didn't <laughs> think that I should have a jacket. Uh, that happened to me one time when I went to the... I guess it was the fall, near winter. Yeah. And I went to a movie theater, and I just had a regular shirt on and everything. It came out around 11 o'clock or whatever. And uh, walking to my car, and as soon as I got to my car, I got a chill, and it just doubled me up. Sometimes... I couldn't put the key in the lock. Sometimes, if the air conditioning is really cranked up in the movie theater, you might need a sweater or... Well, or yeah. jacket in the theater. Yeah. I always need one when I fly somewhere on a plane. Because you can't, even though I think I'm, it looks like I'm closing the air conditioned vent yeah. on me, it's always blowing on me from somewhere, so I don't know. But, uh, and you can get sick easily on, a, on an airplane cabin. You know, it's everything's contained. Recycled air. Right. So anyway, thank you, Jimmy Donovan. And also, uh, would like to say greetings to my good friend, and, uh, and premier, I like that word premier, premier personal trainer for alternative fitness on the uh, in Southern California, Mr. Rick Brown, Slick Rick Brown. And of course, the most important hello is for my near dear friend, Miho in Osaka, Japan. And uh, let's see, uh, of course, my administrators, Sash uh, Boyle, uh, Boyle. Ash Boyle and uh, uh, Joe Jolton Joe Stebbins and Mario Petrus, which I already uh, said hi to, and of course Jimmy Donovan of Jimmy Donovan and his Dirty Old Men Band. I gave him a new name, which they love. I, I, I said you should call it Jimmy Donovan and the Jizzomatics. Yeah, Get it, the Jizzomatics. Has a night, has a, it, has a, it has a great ring to it. Okay, let me tell my story. This is why I hate, and I repeat, hate the American healthcare system and uh, the Republicans' uh, uh, crony capitalism that conservatives love so much. Why I despise them as well as all Republican politicians. This has to do with health care. I had an appointment this week with an ophthalmologist at the Bergen Regional Medical Center in Paramus, New Jersey. I went there and uh, no matter every single appointment you have there, you have to re-register uh, even though you might have the same information in the system. I guess they're afraid that things might change and people will not report a change. It's like entering the hospital. Uh, if you went in there one time and the next time you got to re-register. That it is a hospital. I did that uh, for the prostate somewhere in else. one night. You have to keep on re-registering yeah. because I'm just taking a shot and assumption and saying that the hospital administ administration, the CEO, uh, wants to make sure that everybody is current with their ability to pay. Their, uh, you know, you gotta pay out of pocket. You know, all you teabaggers out there that love this system where you have to pay out of pocket for everything and uh, somehow they don't, th they don't think that education and healthcare should be rights. Well, I think they should be rights and they are rights in, in, in many Northern European countries, probably all of them, okay? And I salute Deutschland for announcing that uh, all tuition is free. All schools and universities in Deutschland and Germany are free. And also Scandinavian countries for having the same system that the whole world should follow. So anyway, I re-register 
I tell them everything's the same, and of course they want to see my cards. Ooh. I give them my cards, the insurance card, all of them, and they look at it and go, oh, "Okay, all right, you're okay." Oh, you know, and they want now they want to see a, a photo ID. Before they never asked me for that. Ooh. Now they want to make sure I'm James P. Madonna. I mean, it's not enough to show them your insurance card with my name on it. No, that's not enough. So no. they want to make they want to validate who I am. Because probably the CEO of the hospital is so worried about making that moolah. I get registered. I go into. I go from waiting a long time in one room to waiting a long time in another room <laughs> to see the specialist. So I'm waiting, waiting. Of course, my appointment was at 2 p.m. and I didn't see the doctor until much later. So then I go. They take. They take me and they put me in another waiting room where the eye specialists work. Mm -hmm. So I had to wait a long time in the third waiting room. And I'm waiting and waiting, getting impatient, complaining to the other people sitting there, and they're telling me, oh yeah, I've been here a long time. All right, how long have you been sitting here? I, I, says, well, I says, well, you know, believe it or not, they gave me this appointment last month. No, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, last year. The appointment for October the second was given to me in the fall of 2013. That's how long a waiting list there was to see the ophthalmologist. Well, it's for mainly I was going in for eyeglass prescription. A whole year to see this guy in a hospital because I figure I was dealing with them before I had Obamacare. So. What the hell? Let me deal with them again for uh, uh, optometry. I, I, for some reason, I forgot all about the appointment. I wasn't even going to go. And then I get a letter reminding me that I had this appointment. I says, all right, all right, I'll go. You know, because I thought it was insane to wait a whole year to see any doctor. It is. So, but the point I'm trying to make is every, every additional waiting room I was sitting in, they asked me for my insurance card over and over and ah. over. And I says, wait a minute. I says to the woman, I already showed the, uh, I already sat with the people in the registration office that re-registered me and they took my cards, they made a copy of it, they verified it, validated it. I already did it when I came here. Why is everybody asking me, for my cards over and over and over and over. I had to get my wallet out, take the cards out and hand it. She says, well, sir, you know, this is your responsibility. I says, I did fulfill my uh, responsibility, ma'am. I showed it to the person that was registering me. How many times, unless it's a form of harassment, how many times do I have to show my insurance card to people in this hospital? Well, you know, you got to do it. I says, I did it. He, even Billy Morrow was, was siding with me yelling. He says, he says, for God's sakes, you, 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 you submitted your cards to the registration people. It's like there were three different hospitals. Yeah, it's like I left. Instead of the same goddamn institution. It's like I left Bergen Regional and I went to another hospital. Yeah. And then I went to another hospital. Then I went to a doctor's office. I says, you, you have me in the system. Yeah. Yeah, 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 you're in the system, all right. Uh -huh. Can I see your cards? Ah, oh, ba as we say in Italian. <laughs> I mean, come on, is this, is this like, is this like harassment of people that... Who the hell knows? What, what is it? What exactly is it? Uh, these, this is stupid. This is absolutely frustrating and stupid. This is one of the reasons, this is why I can't stand the American healthcare system and the crony capitalist system. Why the hell, first of all, education and healthcare should be rights like they are in Northern Europe. And second of all... They are rights, except they've been propagandized out to make the, the poor and etc. and those that would exercise those rights. And of course... As being nothing. And of course, and they're not, uh, you know, making them uh, like it's not true. The U.S. media never rebuttals all this propagandizing. They they, they never show the other opinion. They never, they never take Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren 
and, and stick them on the six o'clock news or whatever with a microphone and, and get their take on all this propaganda. Oh no, they keep on showing the same idiotic crap because from all the Republicans. Because they are corporatized. Because they the, cannot show people who are against their absolute way of be, making be, a living. Because these so-called news people, journalists, are not true journalists. That's correct. They're robots, right? They're corporate suck-up corporate, ass-kissers. That's right. They, every morning they pick the news stories that they will feed to you. Uh-huh. Okay? This is why, and guess what? It's back. This is why there is no trickle-down economics in America. It was never meant to work. You know, trickle-down economics of Ronald Reagan. It's all bullshit. What we have here with the crony capitalist system that's corrupt, the two-party system, what we have is siphon up to the top 20% economics. You hear that, teabaggers? No trickle-down. It's siphon up because this is a siphon. It's an aquarium siphon, but it's in a siphon. It's a siphon. Yeah. Siphon up economics. So next time you hear about trickle down, don't believe it. It's a lie. Propaganda. All right. The great siphon is here. Propaganda, baby. It's propaganda. It's all yeah. propaganda. You know. Um, That's how they get things sold. Hey. Hey, they've done a damn good job. Even though with the uh, 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 you know. Uh, I don't want to pay. I don't want so uh, to pay someone else's a uh, a uh, a uh, a uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, welfare bill but, but, but with yeah, my tax. I'm making funny. I'm making fun of red state teabaggers. Okay, a little tip. You should, if you can afford it, but you know it's still cheaper than doctor bills. You should buy real organic food because the supermarket contains toxic, genetically modified, so-called foods. Some are more toxic than others in our supermarkets. You can thank Monsanto for that. In this case, I will show you what I eat. I Right now, I'm, I've been buying Bob's Red Mill organic whole grain cereals. Now, this one is called Brown Rice Farina, creamy rice hot cereal, brown rice certified organic and I don't know if you can see this but this is not USDA organic I don't trust the USDA or the FDA for shit yeah. it is not true pure safe organic food this is uh, certified organic by QAI Okay, Bob's Red Mill products labeled gluten-free are batch tested in our quality control laboratory. We use an ELISA, E-L-I-S-A, gluten assay test to determine if a product is gluten-free. Many people are gluten sensitive. It is circle, it is K kosher. It is kosher. Best kept refrigerated or frozen, one pound. And it is a um, a high quality organic brown rice. So it is. Um, let me see if it's a organic certified organic by Kwai. Uh, um, let's see. It's this company is in Oregon or Oregon. Bob'sRedMill.com is the website, and you have some recipes in the back and um, QAI, which is a real organization for I don't even know if you can see it probably not probably not QAI take my word for it anyway you can see Bob's Red Mill outstanding product right Bob's Red Mill just but they they have non-organic uh, products that are cheaper but I would buy the organic you know play it safe Bob's Red Mill products from Oregon they have a Facebook page also. Q Q A I Real Certified Organic. Stay clear of USDA organic labels. So it's a good company. I used to buy Arrowhead Mills. I don't I don't I'm not sure if they're still around. Yeah, they're around. Another good company. 
Uh, but right now, this guy has the largest product line of uh, health foods, you know, organic grains and flours and of different kinds and baking uh, flours and uh, granolas and you name it, he's got it. Okay, Bob's red no. He has a, a beard like uh, Abe Lincoln. Oh, uh, no, he's got a mustache now. Mustache. Before he had an Abe Lincoln beard. But anyway, that's it. Bob's red no. Alright? Now, so that's it, you know, I mean, uh, that was my ordeal at Bergen Regional Medical Center. Uh, it's really not that different at the other hospitals. Some are worse than others. You know, Hackensack University Medical Center, they're very anal about asking you immediately for your card. What kind of insurance do you have is the first thing out of their mouths. Very uh, profit-oriented, you know, typical corporate America because the, the CEOs of hospitals Correct me if I'm wrong, they're really not that much different than any other CEO. They have a board of directors, the board of directors votes for their uh, uh, salary, and they all are... Demonic inter scum... Inter inter intermingled. They're scumbags. They're scumbags. And isn't it the CEO who sends the lobbyists to Washington? The corporation does, no matter who the CEO is. You mean the they pay a certain amount of money every year to so, lobbyists? So to the corporate, the, corp work. the corporation as a whole votes on what well, they're the going to do. The corporation doesn't vote. Well, who sends the lobbyists? Shareholders vote. Shareholders. Shareholders supposedly own the company, but they don't. But anyway, they tell the board of directors what to do. The board of directors and the CEO are intermingled, like I say, and they tell each other what to. do. Do. It's like you were explaining. And they siphon the money to themselves. It's like you were explaining last Saturday about the difference between a republic and a democracy. Yeah. You vote for people in a republic; they're not obligated to do your bidding. That's correct. As we, the people, and that's you, why Republicans like they like to make sure they tell you we are not a democracy; we are a republic. That's why they like to tell you that. And what puzzles me the most is the fact that you have people without a pot to piss in defending a system that only benefits the rich. Correct. And how they get brainwashed, why they allow themselves to get brainwashed to do this, to vote against their own best interests is beyond me. Well, it's because they harbor things such as racism. That's true. You know, they harbor these uh, uh, problems within their souls. People, people... So in therefore the, they gravitate to people who, who are going to benefit those things. People that are in the red states may, may still be fighting the Civil War. <laughs> they still yeah. have racist feelings. Uh, uh, they don't like immigrants, which is what they call that xenophobia. The xenophobia, brown people brown people coming into the country xenophobia of course homophobia and uh, misogynism has nothing to do with massage therapy I mean right there right there is a uh, uh, ultimate contradiction why any woman would support the Republican Party and yet they hey, do maybe they're paid off yes, they do. maybe the blonde bombshells of Fox News are paid off shills Oh, well, that's something else. Actresses. I'm actresses. talking about the voters. Right. Women the, voters. Right. Women that are happy to accept second-class citizenship in society. And denial of their rights of their own body. Yeah, how about to that? To do with what they want. Which is, it's a woman's body. If she wants to be a hooker, she should be a hooker. If she doesn't want to carry a, uh, a fertilized egg or um, an embryo, she should a get parasite. a parasite. Right, it's not a human being. Not yet. Well, not for a long shot. That's correct. Uh, I'm glad there's a wind out there because then the flags are blowing, you know, which I feel behind my head. But uh, anyway, let us now sink our teeth into these readings. Let's see how much time we use blabbing. Last week we spent too much time blabber blabbering. <laughs> We're okay.
or okay. It's only 2.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Blabber mouth. Blabbermouth. You're a blabber mouth. Your mother, you're my, mouth. your mother is a blabber mouth from the honeymooners. All right. New, this is a New Jersey uh, uh, article. Article. Reading, okay. And it's about one of our representatives, Scott Garrett. Yeah, we talked about him last week. Republican. And unfortunately, for some reason, when they got rid of Rothman with Bill Pascrell, I now have this guy as my representative along with Bill Pascrell. Well, guess Democrat. what? I am never, ever, you know, to, to give homage to uh, pro wrestler uh, Chris Jericho, never, ever voting for a conservative or Republican again. In any event, Mr. Scott Garrett is up for re-election, of course, has boldly abandoned historical principles. Instead of raising taxes to pay for war debts, he embraced then-President George W. Bush's ingenious tax cut scheme. Ingenious? Yeah. Tax cuts on the rich, probably. That's what it was. That's ingenious? Yes. That, that's, that's it's ingenious. That's expected. How does it get past the, 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 you know, the Democratic voters and et cetera? Uh, How does things boy. like that get past them? To offset revenue shortfalls, he assailed social programs. Yeah. I mean, why, why did Democrats support uh, Chris Christie and uh, Barbara Bono? That's another contradiction of uh, what, the, what the Democratic Party is all about. In huh? particular, those he considers on the path to bankruptcy, like Social Security. In mm. contrast, questionable, patriotic support. Oh, patriotic, uh, to uh, have men and women get killed for big oil. Oh, that, and war profiteering. Oh, that's real patriotic, Scott Garrett. Garrett intuitively perceives that certain societal issues don't require strong legislative effort, as they tend to dissipate over time. Anyway, women's rights, consumer protection, veterans affairs, and gun safety, to name a few. Right. He doesn't care about those things, okay? They're all, it's all predictable with the Republicans, everything. Likewise, infrastructure and environmental problems hardly concern him. Most are exaggerated anyway, and proposed solutions would not pass his famous cost-benefit analysis. Yeah. He firmly believes that big business and job creators would thrive best when self-ruled. Job creators, yeah, in mainland China, Bangladesh, the Philippines, for office work, yeah, job creators. Unburdened by frivolous environmental laws or nagging financial <laughs> regulations. Frivolous, frivolous, when, when the earth is dying and, 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 and the rich live on it, that's frivolous. And when sporadically minor transgressions by banks or incidents like Deepwater Horizon do occur, doesn't the Treasury Department become the big winner, collecting multi-billion dollar windfalls? <sighs> Garrett vehemently attacked the legitimacy of Obamacare. Uh, Gee, uh, I mean, uh, heaven forbid he should uh, interview all the uh, hundreds of thousands or perhaps millions of people that are grateful for their our Obamacare, for having health care coverage that they never had before, low-income people. And deservedly chastised the, chastised the president, who as a former constitutional law professor, utterly failed to grasp the magnitude of his enormous blunder. 
Yeah, the magnitude of the uh, Republican-controlled Congress blunder. Garrett can pride himself on being the only New Jersey lawmaker opposing the final bill designating Patterson's Great Falls as National. The National That's right. Historical Park. America's newest national park, the Great Falls of Patterson, New Jersey, and uh, myself and the Renaissance Man Can Create will be debuting this November 1st, 2014 in the Patterson Historic Museum with Ken Creates Open Mic at the Museum Talent Show. So if you have real talent, give Ken Create a call and audition. We're trying to have a local cable be there to cover it. Anyway, I'm sorry. Go continue. Anyway, he was against that. He was against that. Um, and I want to I want to say hello to the director of the museum, Mr. Giacomo Di Stefano. I salute you. Clearly, such establishments are non-essential and merely consume precious tax dollars. Oh, but uh, giving uh, billions of dollars a year in uh, subsidies to the rich and corporations is not squandering tax dollars. It's not, oh, then it's not giving away precious tax dollars. No, no, of course not. They would better be suited for mining, drilling, and fracking ventures to create prosperity for all. Scott, Scott Garrett can go frack himself. You know, I hate to uh, insult idiots, but the man is an idiot. Okay? He's like... The man is an idiot. He's pure a, and simple. He's, um... Well, I mean, there's two people... There, there, this guy, obviously, is an asshole based on his comments, public comments. Uh, Barbara Bachman... I mean, I'm sorry. Michelle... Michelle Bachman and Sarah Palin are just insane, very stupid people, you know. I mean, very stupid, comical people because they say funny things that make no sense. But people voted for them. On Fox News, of course. But the idiots out in the red states, the uh, brain cell uh, deficient uh, hicks out in the red states vote for them because they are pro-life. Uh, pro and uh, anti-gay and anti-immigration. Those, those, them, dar immigrants are coming into my country and taking my them dar jobs. You get my drift? Yeah. The only blemish on Garrett's near perfect record, caving in under pressure to support Sandy relief program. You see? Yeah. He didn't want to do that, but he was forced to support Sandy relief programs. But he didn't want to. Forced? Yes, he had to be forced. Forced. Yeah. In other words, he wanted to uh, just let the people That's correct. whose homes were destroyed That's correct. to just be homeless and die. That's correct. That's how they feel about health care for the poor and welfare and social security for the, for the uh, disabled and the elderly and uh, food stamps and Planned Parenthood and all that. Well, you see what uh, Rick Perry put up on, uh, uh, somebody put it up on Facebook the other day. Uh, he wants to keep the, uh, you know, the good stuff that Jesus said, but he don't want the commie stuff, like helping the poor. So, and that's kind of, so, 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 so commie so stuff. So when God tells the rich to give to and help the poor, to a Republican. Or sell all they have. That's and follow me. Well, so, you don't like that. So they want to pick and choose what, That's what, correct. what they want to uh, utilize from the Bible. For their man-made religion. For yeah. their man-made religion, which means that uh, they don't really care about God's Word. No, they don't. Do they? No. And they're not Christian. But they like to use it as a front man, don't they? A front. Front man, yeah. Like, like a to get the suckers in. Like a phony uh, TV evangelist. Yeah. Who dupes uh, desperate people out of all their money. Oh, can we all say Pat Robertson? Can we all say Peter Popoff? Can Joel Osteen, the 
the motivational speaker with the permanent smile like the Joker from Batman yeah. Joel Osteen yeah he's not a preacher he's a motivational speaker that's all period they don't really know the Bible that's correct they're uh, snake oil salesmen uh -huh. from a from a carny from a carnival uh -huh. from a couple of generations ago yes yes snake oil salesman come everyone come and see the miracle product that will change your entire Come life. Come see the tattooed lady. The bearded here, tattoo. Here, here, Bearded, two-headed tattoo lady. Two-headed? Well, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just coming up with stuff. See the two-headed calf. The carny, the carny sideshows. They were like, uh, they were like the original infomercial. Yeah. When you think about it. Uh, Hucksters. And actually, that and begging were the only two jobs open to the disabled. At that particular time. The, the begging, yeah, the begging. Arms for the poor, yeah. arms for the poor. I don't know, I heard that on uh, some Aladdin movie, old Aladdin movie. Yes, arms for the poor. Arms for, arms for the poor, or arms for the blind, you know, and you're holding up the, actually the, whatever, receptacle that you throw the money in. Herb but, Jackson's column, another column on Mr. Garrett. We haven't left him yet. Herb Jackson's column described Democrat Roy Cho's plan to appeal to moderate Republicans Judge Roy Bean in his race against Representative Scott Garrett. These Republicans need only visit the American Conservative Union's website to learn that Garrett is rated as more conservative than any of the current congressional representatives from Alabama, Arkansas, Georgia, Mississippi. So it's called the American Conservative Union? I thought conservatives are anti-union. Yeah, I thought so too. <laughs> oh, God. When it, when it benefits them, then they are for anything. Hypocrites. They're man. hypocrites. They're hypocrites. Right. Hip they're the hippiest crits I've ever Clearly, seen. Clearly, Garrett would be considered an extremist even in the reddest of states. He's extremist coke sucker, as in K-O-C-H. Coke brothers, coke sucker. Roy Cho's moderate views are far more closely aligned with most voters in North Jersey. Well, I want to say real quick, I want to salute and say hi. To Mr. Uh, Steve Deshave, uh, De Deshave, uh, Steve Deshave uh, from the uh, the show on um, Travel Channel every Saturday night starting uh, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time called the Dead Files. Ooh. Greetings, Steve Deshave, and he is Steve Deshave is the one that inspired me to wear these old style medieval rings because of Steve Deshave's magical mystical ring that they always zoom in on on the show as he's driving medieval rings what does this magical ring do i don't know my inspiration for showing some class on the show wearing these medieval rings so i owe it to steve the shabby who is doing an outstanding job along with amy allen on the dead files make sure you watch the dead files every Saturday evening on the Travel Channel. You dig where I'm coming from, people? Hey! Hey, what are you doing? My reading just fell on the floor. It blowed away. It blowed away? Yeah, it blowed away. Is it away. an old reading or a new one? It's a brand new. All right, go ahead. Commence. Everything on top here is brand new. Are you insinuating that if you're on top of a woman, no, uh, she is, she is right old and you are brand new. An assembly committee approved a democratic back bill on Thursday that would prevent the state or an independent authority from contracting a company that is structured to avoid paying taxes by having their corporate headquarters quarters overseas. Yeah. 
What the hell? The Commerce and Economic Development Committee voted seven to three, splitting along party lines to pass the bill out of committee. I hate this bipartisanship crap. It wasn't bipartisan. No. Seven to three ain't bipartisan. Okay, okay. But there were probably only three uh, Republicans. And they're the ones who voted against it. Because well, they like it when companies go overseas to avoid paying taxes in the United States of America. Anything for the sake of profit and greed, the right wing is in favor of. That's correct. And anything involving not helping the little guy, the poor, the, uh, what's the word, disenfranchised? Is that a... They like to disenfranchise them even more. Disenfran disenfranchise means you can't vote. They don't want you to vote. Well, they don't want, they don't want the little do, guy to vote. Do not. Voter suppression, like, That's uh, correct. uh, uh, like, uh, Scott Walker in Wisconsin. They're trying it all over. All over, baby. They want that presidency in 2016. Even if it means cheating to get it. They've always cheated. Tampering with the... Uh, they, were, they were accused of franking back in the 80s. Look in at, a court case. They were guilty. Yeah. Well, look at... Uh, they still do all kinds of Look things. at the G.W. Bush Al Gore election concerning Florida and, uh, and Ohio. They, they did not want to wait for the inner city vote from Cleveland to come back. Yeah, of course. They, they wanted to Florida. give Bush Ohio immediately and a Florida, well, Florida well, duh. as the Supreme Court said, yeah. he might be damaged if we waited for a recount. Well, of course he'd be damaged. He'd lose. Yeah. If, if they waited for Cle the Cleveland inner city vote to come in, Gore would have won. I mean, if life was fair. Yeah. Well, he did win when they when they all tallied it up afterwards. Gore did win the popular vote. You know. Yeah, and people just keep on ignoring the fact that the two-party system is totally corrupt in the United States. The bill echoes efforts by President Obama to make it more difficult for companies to use the inverted domestic corporation to reduce their taxes, in part by restricting the scenarios in which the tactic can be used. The term generally refers to a company formally incorporated in the United States that incorporates in a foreign country or one that becomes a subsidiary of a corporation that is incorporated abroad. A news release from Assembly Democrats after the vote said the bill would help entice companies to stay in the United States and would stop them fleeing overseas with our taxpayer dollars. Mm -hmm. If a corporation doesn't want to pay its fair share of taxes, it shouldn't be benefiting by receiving taxpayer-funded dollars. Yeah. A bill, excuse me, hopefully this will create more of an incentive for them to stay in this country and continue employing U.S. workers. You see how we kowtow? Even in trying to regulate them, we kowtow to the corporations. They are our masters. Get it through your head. Not my master. They are our masters. <laughs> no, I'm an independent free thinker. But I'm, when they control my the way when they control the ways that you can obtain a living, they are our masters. Well, period. No matter what you, as an individual, think or want to do or whatever. Ever since the Industrial Revolution, when families left the family-owned farms to live in these cities, and they depended on their very livelihood, their very existence, 
for some boss yeah. to hand them money, some corporation or you know, or employer to hand them money and because they wanted to rig it so everything in life you had to pay out of pocket for, yeah, I would say you most likely are right. That's correct. And of course, during the Industrial Revolution, you did not have regulations to control the demons, yeah. which are the corporations. Because originally, Americans owned their own land and produced their own food, their own living. And of course, the whole family would work the farm and they would live there. Under the bill, the state treasurer would be responsible for determining whether a corporation seeking a contract or subcontract is an inverted domestic corporation. The bill also states that if the federal government has barred a company from performing federal contracts because it is an inverted domestic corporation, then New Jersey will also consider it one. Right on, brother. If you, if you people are wondering what this is, this is a weapons-grade imported Blackthorn Irish Shillelagh. Now I can assure you that the shamrock of authenticity. A Blackthorn, a Black. Yeah. What? You can assure me. I can me. assure you that that bill will not pass in the House or in the Senate. Okay. Yeah. I'm Italian, but I like shillelaghs. I feel like Judge Judy with the gavel. It helps helps me emphasize things that like this, the things that irate me. Especially that uh, those comments by uh, by uh, Scott Garrett. You know, how are we doing on time? Break. Five minutes for lunchy poo. We might as well take the break now five minutes, right? Yeah. All right. Well, it is yeah. now time for uh, Dr. Bill's lunch break. And um, we uh, there's no show with William H. Morrow this week, so we will be going uh, uh, on location with William H. Morrow, our voiceover artist for promo, for commercial. And um, then we will return after our break for the uh, second half of this show. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed the banner you saw at the beginning of the show, a quote from Mark Twain. Mark Twain. Where he said that uh, politicians should be changed often like diapers for the same, same reason. Because they stink. Because they're full of shit. shit. Very cute. Quote by Mark, Mark Twain. Twain was a very good, uh, yeah, uh, you know, for uh, sayings. He, he was a wise, uh, wise, clever man. Clever. He was, That's what he was a cool for. dude. You know, like Ted, Teddy thing. Roosevelt was a cool yeah. dude also. He, he, yeah, he, he but was, Teddy Roosevelt killed big animals. He was a big game hunter. That's correct. But he he was the instrumental in starting the uh, the national parks in America. That's correct. Yeah, he was. All right, we'll see you. But he was still, well, let me just put this point in there. He was still, at that particular time, it was a manly thing to go after the beasts. Well, because no. because Americans at that time, uh, quite often, um, the men hunted for their food. And the, wim the yeah, women well, took care of the, uh, the, 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 huh? It wasn't hunting for food. Oh, he food. did it for sport. That's so it was a macho thing. Manly thing. But you didn't have high-powered rifles like you have today, so if you're going to pop a grizzly, you better be a perfect shot. No, he went to Africa, I believe. You're looking for the, uh, the, big, the big animals. I don't know how they were able to bring down big game with those crude rifles. I don't know. You know? It wasn't so crude in 1904. Oh. Oh, maybe. The they maybe. didn't have M16s, but you so that it wasn't like the old days of the musket. Nah, it wasn't the black no. black powder and the lead yeah. ball and no, all that. Oh no, no. Uh, okay. I mean, even in uh, even in the older days, uh, not so older days, they had Winchesters. 
Even the Indian. Winchester, Indian. right? Not Winchester Cathedral. Not that no, stupid Winchester song. Winchester Rifles. Oh, okay. And Colt forty-five. Ah, which incidentally, wow. the Colt exhibit is at the Patterson Historic Museum because Samuel Colt made his Colt firearms in Patterson, New Jersey. Uh -huh. Yes, and I, it's on YouTube. My uh, my um, display of the Colt firearm exhibit is right now on YouTube. Just uh, just uh, Google Mega Life Twenty One. All right, can I take this break now? Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Okay, this is James P. Madonna. Um, this is pretty much how I make my antioxidant-rich herbal tea. Uh, it lasts me two days. Okay, I use a, um, a Presto, a stainless steel Presto 12-cup electric percolator pot. Okay, as you could see. By Presto, great company. They also, it's also the same company that makes my, my uh, pressure cookers. I got two of them, uh, six quart pressure cookers. Okay. To save time, I fill it up with filtered water from the Brita filter. It's supposed to be 12 cups, but I go a little higher than the hole, than the spout hole right here. Then I put the this piece of hard hardware in that holds the basket that allows the water to percolate upward and I put um, one overflowing capful of pure lemon juice because lemon juice um, the uh, citric acid <coughs> and properties of lemon juice enhance the uh, antioxidants in tea. The uh, epigallico catechin gallates of tea. It enhances it. It makes it more effective. So I put the overflowing capful of pure lemon juice. Here I have three bags of organic uh, Japanese uh, green tea. I put two bags of stinging nettles tea. This is a um, low-priced stinging nettles from Croatia, Europe, that I, I buy in, a, in an international market called National Wholesale Liquidators. I think it cost me like less than $1.99 for 20 bags. I put two bags of organic Alveda chamomile tea in there. And I put two bags of imported uh, peppermint tea. I usually go by what smells the nicest, you know. So you can use whatever, whatever company uh, is on sale. Um, so I oh um, also sometimes if I have it, it's not. It hasn't been easy to find, but I put a, a heaping teaspoon of cloves, of whole cloves, in the basket. And sometimes I use um, uh, loose tea from China. And let me show you what I'm using, what I've been using. Okay, this one is a uh, Temple from Heaven special gunpowder. It's called. Let me get the front. Temple of Heaven, China Green Tea, Special Gunpowder. Uh, two teaspoons will make an entire 12 cup percolator pot of very dark green tea. It, it, it looks like little rolled up dried nuggets. You know, they're rolled, the leaves are rolled into nuggets, so it really expands. But I usually get this in an Asian market, uh, so I switch off from time to time. So what I'm going to do 
is get ready to plug it in. Uh, all right, and uh, I'm gonna try to uh, do this with one hand as I'm holding the camera. Now, of course, since I'm trying to do this one. Handed, it's going to take forever for me to find the hole, and I might get pissed off. But you know, I'm in a rush. Oh, I think I got it. All right, cap it, cover on, and plug it in. And after it finished percolating, the light will go go on where it says presto that means it's done but I won't drink it yet I'll let it steep for a good hour I want it to get as dark as coffee and um, and then after I drink it I won't drink it till late hours at night but you know maybe I'll have my last cup at 9 p.m give or take, I'll shut it off, I'll unplug it, and I will, I will repercolate it the day after, and as leftover tea, it's really dark and potent. So let me plug it in. Plug it in, plug it in. Okay. And then soon I will hear the, the sounds of percolation. So, without boring you, this is it. This is how, this is the best way I make my tea. Now, when I make my tea for the stainless steel thermos without glass inside that I, you see me drinking during uh, my weekly internet talk show, Uncensored Hard Hitting Truth, I do it the same way. I make it in the Presto 12 cup percolator pot and then I simply fill up the thermos so that's how I do it uh, you could use different teas if you want um, I like this tea from Poland which is uh, made from aronia berries also known as choke berries extremely medicinal and high in antioxidants very high I believe I read it it actually beats out um, acai berry from Brazil. That's how great it is. It's uh, superior to black currants and bilberry for the eyes. So, but I only get it from um, an international market that has these uh, these berry teas from Poland because there is no cheap filler in European teas. And when I say cheap filler. I mean, uh, rose hips and hibiscus are often used by American companies as a cheap filler to give you less of the active ingredient and rip you off. Of course, what else is new with American companies? And there you have it. You hear the noise. of percolation. Well, I heard one. What happened? Anyway. It takes a bit to percolate more than 12 cups. But I, I have plenty of time. This is William H. Morrow. The best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to Newsletter Censored with your gift to support this work. The newsletter of hard-hitting truth and news-fighting censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. There is nothing out there like the newsletter censored in the mainstream media or the press. This newsletter is the very best way to join 
and be a part of our organization. We're living the end times, so you need Newsletter Censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com. Okay, we're back. We're back, and thank you, William H. Morrow the third, our voiceover artist for doing promo. Wonderful job as always. I hear some idiot outside laughing like he should get a job in a in a Halloween, um, uh, you know, fun house. I mean, um, amusement park. In the scary, in the scary fun house, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> that's probably his real, la or his real scary laugh. Scary corn maze. The corn maze. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. they have zombies pop up, you know. Well, they, if you're gonna have maze. zombies popping up, you might as well use genetically modified corn. Monsanto corn. You you, you don't want to use healthy corn. You want to use toxic corn because it's Halloween. They don't get corny, huh? Yeah. Oh. Oh. Yes, I got an allergy attack. And I just took some pills. So I'll be rubbing my eyes every now and then. I was playing with the cat. One of the cats, maybe that did it. You know, but, oh. Until, until the pills kick in. All right. Let's sink our teeth back into these readings. <laughs> oh, God. Oh. I know rubbing them doesn't make it easier. A huge cyber attack. Yeah. Against J.P. Morgan Jason Company. Against them? This summer has compromised customer information for about 76 million households. You mean the hackers are at it again? Oh, they've been very busy lately. I'm doing a cold water compress to see if it helps. And 7 million small businesses. The New York-based bank said that names, addresses, phone numbers and email addresses of customers were stolen from the company's servers. This is not good. It's but only Chase customers yeah. who use certain websites or mobile apps were affected. Those websites are Chase.com JP Morgan Online Chase Mobile and JP Morgan Mobile. Got that, folks? JP Morgan said Ugh. there's no evidence that the data breach included account numbers, passwords, social security numbers, or dates of birth. It also said it has not seen any unusual customer fraud stemming from the data breach. J.P. Morgan Chase, the nation's biggest bank by assets, has been working with law enforcement officials to investigate the cyber attack. The bank discovered the intrusion on its computer servers in mid-August and has since determined that the breach began as early as June. Uh. We have identified and closed the known access paths. The company also disabled compromised accounts, reset passwords of all its technology employees. I thought, I thought these companies use encryption. That's supposed to be very effective in preventing unwanted uh, infiltration, hacking. They're all hackable. Even encryption? Even governments are hackable. 
unbelievable. Th this is why, this is what the Bank of America told me. We use a great encryption That's to get you to system. go and do online banking. Our, it's our, not necessarily the truth. They're telling us, they told me onla our online banking is safe because our encryption is cannot be penetrated. And right. that's why China penetrates the Pentagon. No wonder my sister flat out refuses to do online banking. She doesn't, and she works in IT. In a post <coughs> on <coughs> Chase.com website, the bank told <coughs> customers yeah. that it doesn't believe they need to change their password oh. or account information. The breach is the latest in a series of data thefts that have hit financial firms. Last year, four Russian nationals and a Ukrainian were charged in what has been called the largest hacking and data breach scheme ever prosecuted in the United States. They were accused of running a hacking organization that penetrated computer networks of more than a dozen major U.S. and international corporations over seven years. Stealing and selling at least 160 million credit and debit card numbers. Oh shit. Resulting in losses of hundreds of millions of dollars. This is a good thing you're reading this. This is a this is pretty heavy duty. Yeah. Yeah. So a lesson to be learned from this is do not trust when 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 a bank brags about its its security using encryption. Do not trust what they say to you. Because companies in America, do lie. Oh. If it involves selling a product, they all lie. It, if it involves getting you to deposit with them, they all lie. Yeah. Oh. Six thousand uh -huh. baby horseshoe crabs. Oh, how cute are making their way in the waters near Cape May this weekend. They migrate. This is an annual migration, most likely. They're very prehistoric looking, the horseshoe crab. They look, they look like a trilobite. I think they are prehistoric. Modern day descendants of trilobites. Yeah, yeah they, they have been unchanged. Yeah. That is true for millions of years. Thanks to a Rutgers University Center that grows and releases them. Oh, why are they endangered? The horseshoe crab are a threatened species. The New Jersey Aquaculture Innovation Center release the hatchlings. This is cool, man. Each tinier than a child's fingernail. This is cool. I gotta look them up online. I like this article if you're done, you know, when you're done with it into the Cape May Canal on Friday. The center has released 250,000 of the young crabs over the past two years. That's not a lot. No, it isn't. Compared to the eggs that they, they hatch. I like to consider this a head start program for horseshoe crabs, said Mike DeLuca. They're probably endangered. Senior Associate Director of the Rutgers Institute of Marine and Coastal Sciences. There is a 90% mortality rate for these crabs. Oh yeah, because of the perils of the sea, you know, I mean. And they're so tiny. Same thing with baby uh, sea turtles. They're cute as hell, but, you know, many of them don't make it. That's why I like, you know, I think they should get help, you know, like... Uh, take a hundred percent of the hatched eggs and go bring them to the weed beds, uh, seaweed beds. The crabs yeah. lay millions of eggs, but not many survive to become adult crabs. 
you know, all, all crabs are born from the sea, even land crabs. They, their eggs are, hold on, airline. Crabs, all crab, or even land crabs are, are born in the sea. Their eggs are laid there and hatch into, in, in, in the sea as like little plankton, little animal plankton. And then they return to the beach. Enter the aquaculture center, which grows not only horseshoe crabs, but oysters. And mummy cog, a bait fish. Yeah, they're uh, oyster beds. I've seen documentaries about oyster beds. It's fascinating. And also the uh, gooey duck, I think they call them. It's a giant piss clam in uh, the Pacific Northwest. In Tahiti, yeah, the oysters give you black pearl. Yeah, they're they're Tahitian. The famous, world famous Tahitian pearls are farmed in in the in the um, Bora Bora, South Pacific. Yeah, they're they have it's down to a science. They they farm them. They put a little bit of uh, like a grain of sand or something to agitate the oyster. <laughs> they they deliberately it's not bad, it's they deliberately right? place it, inject it in the oyster. And then the oyster returns to the uh, to the farm, to the undersea farm, in shallow waters. And then over over a certain amount of time, the oyster covers the uh, agitation with uh, a calcium type of calcium deposit. And, and over time, it becomes a pearl. And if it's a black pearl, it's worth a lot of money. It's part of an effort to replenish the population of horseshoe crabs, which is under pressure from habitat loss. Commercial fishing that uses them as bait. Oh, really? For whelk and eels. What the hell? They're a shell for crying out loud. How can they be bait? I didn't know that. I know whelks. They look like a tank. I know whelks are predatory. Are pre it's a predatory sea snail. That I did not think the whelks are that aggressive to kill a horseshoe crab. New Jersey yeah. prohibits harvesting them, but neighboring Delaware does not. No, that doesn't help because Cape May is he right here. Okay, it's a peninsula. The Delaware Bay is in between, and then you have the state of Delaware. Well, if Cape May, New Jersey is trying to help the species and the ne neighboring state on the other side of the bay is not, what good is it? It should be a combined effort. But it's also intended to spur economic development in South Jersey, where Delaware Bay is home to the largest horseshoe crab population in the world. There's also a lot of sharks that come up Delaware Bay too. <laughs> It's a big feeding ground, you know, and any point, I used to do a lot of fishing, any point of land, any strip of land that juts out into the water, whether it be a peninsula or whatever, is a, ends up being a big feeding ground for aquatic life. Fish tend to like that, they like points. A property in the crab's blood called Limulus ame amoebo site lysate is coveted by the pharmaceutical industry which uses it to test for contamination in drugs and medical devices. Oh. The Luca said five groups <sighs> have permits to harvest horseshoe crabs in New Jersey for medical purposes. Really? The crabs are placed on racks and 30% of their blood is drawn before they are released. The pharmaceutical industry pays $15,000 per quart. Really? Which it uses to test for adulteration of drugs and medical devices to be implanted into patients. Well, there, there are many uh, 
unsus unsuspected sources that are medicine. Bee venom, scorpion venom, you know, uh, uh, some, many venoms are used as medicine. Restocking is vital. The process usually kills about 10 to 15 percent of the crabs. So it is important to keep replenishing their numbers in the wild. Thus the farm raising of them, the aquaculture. <laughs> the crabs oh. are also a crucial food source for several species right. of endangered <laughs> or threatened shorebirds. There you go. Oh. Because the crabs lay their eggs in the sandy beaches of Delaware Bay. I apologize to you, the viewers for my allergy attack. It just came suddenly. The area is the main stopover for red knots, a shorebird listed as endangered in New Jersey uh -huh. and proposed for listing as such with the federal government. The birds gorge themselves on horseshoe crab eggs to refuel themselves for the second half of their 10,000 mile annual migration from South America to Canada. That doesn't help the horseshoe crab population at all. If they're gorging themselves on the on the on the row with the caviar of the horseshoe crab. This is what why aquaculture is so important to actually hatch them and give them a head start to to bring the hatchlings. See, I would bring the hatchlings not to the beach. I would bring them to to where they they hide for safety like if there's a seaweed bed in a certain area I would just dump them there you know the red knots numbers have declined by 80 percent since 2000 there are about 35,000 left in the world uh -huh. other species that depend on the crab eggs include the ruddy turnstone and the short billed dowager. For you Audubon Society uh, enthusiasts. DeLuca estimated the horseshoe crab population in the mid Atlantic region at 2.5 million to 4 million. A number he said is slowly rebounding. From years of decline. Right. Gene Slowinski, director of open innovation research at Rutgers Business School, said a team of six Rutgers MBA students is working on a marketing plan for the marine life the center produces. The fun part of all this is the marine guys got together with the business guys who got together with the students. The center collects crab eggs from Delaware Bay beaches for three months of the year when the crabs are most vulnerable to being eaten by other species. Well, aren't they laying them in captivity? No. Housed and nurtured in large rectangular tanks in a warehouse when they pick the you know the, the, the eggs up or whatever. Not far from the Cape May Ferry, the crab hatchlings can be studied in a way they can't be in the wild at this early stage in their lives, giving insight into their habitat. So they and feeding preferences. So that's tough, man. If they can't get the horseshoe crabs to lay at the aquaculture, then they have to go harvest the eggs and then bring them to the aquaculture. And and this is this is if they can harvest the eggs before the, the birds gorge on them. So this is not easy. They require little specialized care through their first four years when they grow old enough to try to make it on their own. Well, I don't think Republicans would like that too much, being so dependent for like, for four years. 
before well, you can make it on your own, pull yourself up by the bootstraps? Re re Republic re Republicans would immediately cut funding for, for if the aquaculture... For Rutgers. Yeah. For Rutgers, yeah. This whole program will be axed. <laughs> that, like, Chris Christie would, would cut any public funding for for anything. <laughs> the only thing he funds is, is his rich friends. That's what Republicans do. Crony capitalism. Cronies. They require little specialized care, as I said. The 600 or so crabs expected to survive from the 6,000 that were released into the canal may one day be seen dragging their helmet-shaped shells through the sands of southern New Jersey's beaches. I used to live in Union Beach, New Jersey, in a house that was barely 20 feet from the water. And there was a little bulkhead in the back. Oh. You jump over the bulkhead, you're down in the beach. And, you know, at that time of the year, that's all you would see would be the, the marks of the horseshoe crabs as they're moving along the beach. Interesting. Yeah. You know, dragging their shell. Or lying upside down and got it after becoming a lunch for an exhausted or famished shorebird. Famished. It's the circle of life with a little assist from Rutgers. Well, I was sure eating like I was famished when I was at Jimmy Donovan's Fall Bash 2014 when I smelled that pulled pork and I saw that eggplant parmesan. I was eating like a shorebird. Quack, quack, quack. Quack, 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 quack. Yeah, how come Burgess Meredith, when he played the penguin on Batman, quacked like a duck? I don't I don't think penguins quack like a duck. No, quack, I quack, quack. Quack. they make us they make us the yeah, they make a different kind of noise. Maybe Burgess Meredith couldn't make any other sound. Because that's how they, uh, that's how they know their babies. You I, know? I, I watched a documentary way. of Antarctica a couple days ago where the, uh, the emperor penguins, which are usually the largest, the, the mother lost the baby and the yeah. baby couldn't find her in time and, and the baby froze to death. It was solid frozen and she was... She, her, and the uh, the male were like they looked like they were mourning over the passing. Yeah. She tried to she tried to warm it up, but you know, to no avail. You know, it's too late. it was too late. But because what, what happens is the eggs are kept warm by either parent as one goes out to sea to eat to catch fish, and then uh, I guess after they're hatched, the babies are still close to the parent. You know, huddling to uh, from the wind chill of Antarctica. You know? And that's why you see them all together too. Yeah, they're they, always you know shoulder to shoulder. They're huddling. Yeah. But but they do. The the temperature does somewhat go down in the summer, spring and summer. Uh, they don't really. I think they huddle during the coldest time of the year. I think I would huddle and cuddle during the coldest time of the year. Because they have, there's no birdhouses for the penguins. They're they're out there in the open yeah. elements with the wind, and uh, you know I don't have to say much more about Antarctica's temperatures. <laughs> even though global warming happens to be melting even Antarctica's ice sheets. Which is a bad thing. Speaking uh, of an ice sheet. And Antarctic is a continent, you know, there's land under there. It's not like the Arctic Ocean, the, you know, the North Pole, it's, which is all ocean. All right, go ahead. Republican Texas Governor Rick Perry. Who should be uh, exiled to Antarctica. On Sunday, invoked comedian Joan Rivers' death at a surgical clinic in defending a law he signed that would close
owns the majority of abortion facilities in the nation's second most populous state. Really? Yeah. Because they feel that these religious cultists, these zealots, feel that a fertilized egg and an, an embryo that breeds like a fish is a human being. Just because it life begins at conception. Just because they can they can detect a heartbeat and a brain wave. Yeah, but the heartbeat comes later. later. The heartbeat is only to circulate the blood. No, okay, the, because the blood at that particular time is providing the yeah. fetus or whatever it is with oxygen much like a fish that's how earth. that's how it develops of that's course. how it's breathing per se you know they do have some sort of chemical i saw it in the abyss the movie the abyss the abyss the abyss hey abyss and it would it, hey. whatever it was a chemical, it allowed a mouse to breathe underwater. Oh. And it was the saving of the the guy's wife or something because she was able to breathe underwater and they had to move from one area of the vessel or something into water to another. Anyway, they were able to breathe like that. With that chemical. And I do believe that it's real. Anyway! Perry, a potential 2016 presidential candidate, Lovely. oops, the, the. said the law made Texas safer. Safer? Even though a federal judge in August blocked a key provision that requires abortion clinics to meet hospital level operating standards. Had that requirement taken effect, only seven abortion facilities would remain in Texas. Joan Rivers, 81, was undergoing a routine procedure at a New York outpatient surgery center when she went into cardiac arrest and died. Yeah, after receiving the uh, anesthesia. Health officials in New York are investigating. That Michael Jackson died from... Uh. It was interesting that Joan Rivers and the procedure that she had done where she died, that was a clinic, Barry said. It's a curious thought that if they had that type of regulations in place, whether or not that individual would still be alive. Abortion rights supporters bristled at Perry's comparison. The reality is that complications happen in all areas of medicine. There's risk inherent in anything. You could have a heart attack and die while having your wisdom teeth removed. It's possible, sure. Should we outlaw wisdom teeth removal? No, but if, if, if. There's no logical reason for Joan Rivers to go into cardiac arrest. And and if she went into cardiac arrest because of the anesthesia, then I see I see a problem here, you know, and I think well, Melissa we're Rivers has New York State investigated yeah. and come up with some conclusions. But Mr. Perry has no right to be comparing that situation with abortion clinic. No, it's, it's unrelated. Okay, unrelated. Totally. Not a, not a, not applicable at all. No. No, he's just Mr. a douche. He's just a douchebag. He's a right wing douchebag. It's a religious thing for Mr. Perry yeah. and Hobby Lobby and all the other religious nuts crap. Which, since it's a religious thing, it is not proven. It is unproven. Nobody has proven any religion to this day. No one's God has been proven to exist. Therefore, politics should never be involved with religion, and not one penny of taxpayers' money should go towards any religion. Uh, yes, the Constitution <coughs> sets up a secular government. Yeah. 
okay, with no establishment of religion and etc., and no favoring one religion over the other, etc., etc. But they don't believe it. They don't believe the uh, uh, Treaty of Tripoli with Jefferson telling them that the United States is in no way a Christian nation. They don't believe the letter to the Baptists that Jefferson wrote indicating that, you know, this is not a religion state and etc. etc. They don't believe any of this stuff. They believe that the pilgrims brought over the Bible. I say, so what? So what? So what? Big deal. So the Indians, the Native Americans, and all indigenous people had their culture and their beliefs for thousands of years, possibly hundreds of thousands of years, and just because a bunch of fanatical kooks came over on a boat from uh, from Europe, from England, or wherever, mm -hmm. and uh, or Spain, that uh, that the indigenous people should just throw their culture and their beliefs right down, you know, into the compost pile and adopt whatever the Europeans say by force, by extortion, you know because of the arrogance of the uh, European colonists. Uh, and this applies to all indigenous people throughout the world. They, they, they screwed over the aborigines, just like they screwed over all indigenous people, and whom I salute and say hello to my good friend, Mr. Sean Harris of Western Australia, a very uh, prominent, civil rights activist, an aboriginal civil rights activist there, mm -hmm. Sean Harris, okay. Yeah. Uh, a little change of pace here. Tomato pace? Yeah. Or change of pace, or pace. Oh. My 25-year-old daughter briefly dated a man she met in church last December. After one month, she ended the friendship. He was too emotionally needy. Yeah. Well. He continues to pursue her. So he's a stalker. He's like a, he's a begging brother. He's thirsty. He's a thirsty, insecure man. By constantly texting and emailing her. She says he alternates between saying mean things and then apologizing and begging her to give him another chance. One more chance. Wasn't that an old song Felix Unger sang on the Ark Couple? One more chance. Da, 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 da. Yeah, it was some old song he sang. <laughs> she does not respond and blocked his phone. Uh, but he continues to text from different numbers. She does not reply to his emails. She moved to a different side of town, and so far, he has not shown up at her work. We're very worried about this. What steps can she take to be safe and get this man to stop contacting her? Should her father confront him? So far, we have not gotten involved. Well, stalking should be taken seriously because you know you don't want this person to go postal you know it should be taken seriously um, as far as you know love and relationships go you know it takes two to dance the tango it can't be one-sided I shared your question with Michelle Archer an expert on stalking with the victims advocacy group Safe Horizon. Yeah, I'm not talking about poking, poking somebody with a stalker celery. I'm talking about serious stalking. SafeHorizon.org. Archer has some suggestions for your daughter. Keep a stalking log of all incidents, including the date time, location, and brief description of the incident. Including saving any uh, 
cards, any greeting cards, or or letters sent by the stalker, or texts. Yes, do a print screen. The key is uh, sometimes it says print screen or or it says PS on the upper top right hand corner of your keyboard. Hit print screen. Go to uh, Microsoft Paint or is it Word Paint? Paint. Paint. Go to Paint. You know, click on Start, then Accessories, and Paint, and then right-click, Paste, and it will print this. It will uh, you, the the print screen image will appear. Then you click Save As a File, Save As, give it a name, put it in a folder, make a folder called uh, Stalker or whatever you want to call it, so it's easy to find. You know, and uh, save everything there. All text. This is how you save all your text. Everyone out there that has a similar problem of harassment. All right, you just learned something from old James P. Madonna. I would suggest not changing her email address, but she may want to open another account and give that to people she trusts. Pouring my tea. I'm not urinating. Changing her email address may escalate his behavior and the emails he is sending become evidence of stalking, which she can use if she goes to the police. Uh huh. If she has concerns about him showing up at her work, she should let her place of employment know that. If she has a photo of him, she can make a color copy and give it to her workplace. Yes, if he shows up, he's a stalker, he's stalking me, he's harassing me, Notify uh, building security. If she uses a networking site, a social networking site, make them private and be mindful of what she posts. You could block him from Facebook. He could be blocked. Speaking of Facebook, I saw some time ago that Mr. Zucker Zucker Geek? Geek. Mark Zucker Geek? Is wanting us to pay for Facebook. Excuse me while I, I scratch the itch in the middle of my forehead. Mr. Mark Zucker Beak or Zucker Geek, whatever you call yourself. And I saw nothing more on that. No, maybe it was a hoax. Could be. All I know is it'll be a cold day in hell that I pay a fee to belong to a social website where they are constantly shoving advertisement down our throats okay because we have a free profile that is the payment us tolerating your constant bombardment of advertising spamming whatever by the way that is the payment I finally got rid of shopper pro Oh, you were being bothered all the time by that. Yeah, and the reason was I would delete it in the control panel and it would come back. It well, wouldn't go... Gee, I wonder why. Well, I went under downloads and lo and behold, there it was. So every time I deleted it, it set it up again. You know, I... You just reminded me of something. I have to go to the control panel and go click on security and, and click on adv um, whatever, advanced or custom and reactivate my pop-up blocker because I'm getting the pop-ups, you know. You use Firefox? Yeah. There's a pop-up blocker there on Firefox. I think I have a funny feeling that if you have a Windows operating system, Microsoft, yeah, Windows operating system, that it, it kind of like tries to buck heads and punish you for having a different browser than IE, because the, the, there seems to be an occasional Firefox glitch or glitches that arise. Actually, Firefox is glitching all the time. Right now... They shouldn't be. They're highly rated. Right now, if I'm in my email, 
and I get a link and I want to click on the link and if Firefox is my default browser which is mine it won't work oh really I have to make Chrome my default so, browser so when I send you a link it doesn't appear it doesn't appear as a clickable link you just get the the text it won't take you anywhere that's not good Firefox won't take you to the link okay so I have to use Chromey that sucks for that and in and then I just use Firefox when I go on the internet right I use that one. But if you send somebody a, you know a link, email it, it's supposed to appear as a link. Because I can't seem to find how to take all of my favorites from Firefox and put them on Chrome also. Yeah, could that be done? I don't know. It should be. Yeah, but I have no idea how to do it. I don't either. I'm still trying to uh, figure out how to stop uh, my uh, my idle screen from constantly going dark Co well, every few every with, half yeah. a minute. Huh? You have to go in. and You got to change the time. On that. I tried to look for it, like you said, and I couldn't find it. Right click uh, and uh, on the on the uh, screensaver image. Now it's on display, I think. It's on how, the display. How do I get to display? I don't know. I have to figure it out. All right. Anyway, if this continues, she may want to contact the police. The stalking log is useful for this. Yes. And she should also show them the text messages. The restraining order, it always goes much smoother when you have a log of information. Proof. There's only one problem with restraining orders. They don't restrain. The per per perpetrator doesn't care. Doesn't care if he's going to get arrested. That's why the best restraining order is a 12-gauge shotgun. She can also reach out to a domestic violence organization in her community for support or help advoca advocating with the police, if needed, or the district attorney's office. Yeah, it's, it's a form of, of harassment, you know, the, you're, you're, you're inducing fear in this woman. Uh, Archer adds... I can't comment on whether the father should confront him because I do not have enough information about the individual pursuing her. It'll be a, it'll be a fist fight. It'll be In an general, altercation. Yeah. this is not recommended. No, because there will be a physical altercation. In Guaranteed. addition to the above actions, I'd like to encourage her daughter not to let this isolate her. The more support she has from friends, colleagues, family members, and local law enforcement, the more secure she will feel. I'm telling you, creating a folder and storing proof data to support the fact that she's being stalked and harassed like this is, is extremely important. You know, utilize that print screen on your keyboard. Save those texts. Save those love letters or whatever those crazy letters or greeting cards that he sends you. Document it. Document everything. All right, we have uh, time for probably one more. Yeah. So what shall it be? McConnell and Grimes or Tracy Morton? Well, I want uh, do do uh, McConnell and Grimes, but I'm going to I'm going to talk about Tracy Morgan verbally out of my mouth from what I've been studying. Walmart blaming them. is blaming Tracy Morgan for, they claim he wasn't wearing his seatbelt, but the, the thing is that their truck with the exhausted, sleep-deprived Walmart driver hit Tracy Morgan's limo 
and killed one of his co-workers and landed everyone else in the hospital uh, with very severe injuries. Their truck, their commercial truck, hit Tracy Morgan's limo. So regardless of whether or not Tracy Morgan, comedian Tracy Morgan, had a seatbelt on or not, it, the fact is that they hit him. Mm -hmm. uh, was Tracy Morgan's limo stationary when, when, when the uh, Walmart truck collided with it? It was either in traffic or stopped. Right. But it was on uh, right. the turnpike, so I don't know if it was The New Jersey stopped. turnpike, yeah. Now, yeah. see, Walmart's driver was on a schedule that was very brutal and long and without any time for sleep because Walmart run by the Walton family, they're greedy, son of a bitch, scumbag, evil uh, uh, elitists that do not care about people, their employees at all. They just care about profit over people and everything else. So their, their drivers are, are sleep deprived. They're, um, they're most likely, of course, non-union. And they are, are uh, they're just overworked with no rest, and they're probably on a schedule, and the uh, the man probably dozed off, perhaps, maybe he was drunk or I don't know the the details of the Walmart driver, but I know that he hit he collided with Tracy Morgan's limo, and that's it, you know, and and of course. They don't care. Walmart, the Walton family, don't do not care, and uh, they feel that they don't want to pay out. And I'm sure Tracy Morgan's lawyer is going to sue the hell out of Walmart, and I hope they, I hope it, he does. So I wish luck and salute to the speedy recovery and the successful lawsuit of comedian Tracy Morgan. You know, our our hearts are with you, and I hope. Walmart gets hammered, you know, like a like a B-52 bomber, and that's it. So do McConnell, do old, old old ugly turtle face Mitch McConnell. Kentucky Senator Mitch McConnell is criticizing his Democratic opponent for drawing her state paycheck while away from work to campaign. Yeah. Left on said in the new TV ad is that McConnell appears to be taking his government salaries while campaigning also. Oh, lovely. Well, isn't that what Republicans always do, though? If they, they're guilty of something, they always say the other person is. That's what they do to deflect look at criticism. Look at over there. That's correct. The, the old trick in the book. Look at over thing. there. <clears throat> exactly. Uh, oh, by the way, was I, did I pretty much summarize what that Tracy Morgan article was about and what I said? Yeah, well, you'll get a chance next week. Okay. But the point is right. that I want to make is my understanding of the law. It doesn't really matter whether the person that you hit was wearing a seatbelt or not wearing a seatbelt because you have the responsibility of having your car yeah. under control right. at all times. And you must be, you must be by law, a specific amount of car lengths behind the car in front of you. Otherwise, you are you are tailgating that vehicle. You must have the ability to stop uh, so, during an emergency situation. You must man, be able to stop in in time. The man was asleep. Yeah. So he did not have his car under control at all times. Now, and did they, and this is the accusation that Walmart is making towards Tracy Morgan that he wasn't wearing a belt? Right. Okay, so I, I summarized it pretty good. All right, continue with... Uh, McConnell's ad was among those fired in a new salvo this week in one of the nation's fiercest and most expensive races for United States Senate. It's a contest Republicans are counting on as they reach for the six seats they need to take control of the chamber and boost McConnell to the majority leader. Yeah, he's a piece of, he's a piece of garbage if I've ever 
seen one. He, well, they all are. For the first time, Senate Democrats this week began spending money to support their nominee, Allison Lundergan Grimes, in the purchase of one million dollars worth of ads targeting McConnell. Well, at least her middle name is not Grimy. Allison Grimy Grimes. His political action committee, part of one of the most aggressive finance efforts in the country, countered with its own one million dollar ad buy. Oh boy. Most of McConnell's ads relentlessly try to tie Grimes to President Obama. Who is uh, um, mistakenly blamed for absolutely everything that G.W. Bush Dick Cheney did. And who is very unpopular in Kentucky. Because Kentucky is full of zealot, right-wing fundamentalists, evangelical, religious nuts. On such issues Cult as cultists, energy, yeah, health care, and immigration. Ah, oh, them dar immigrants. What the hell does it, it, Kentucky care about immigration? Right. It's not a border state. Far from it. <laughs> My God. Yeah, you know. That's I mean, one of those talking points. Republican talking points. Now, if you're a redneck in Arizona, New Mexico, or Texas, or Texas. Uh, you know, and it might be an issue with you, or uh, Southern California, but not Kentucky. Kentucky. Now you should be just thinking about bourbon, which is the only thing Kentuckians do best is make bourbon, and uh, and of course the Churchill Downs, the Kentucky Derby. But an ad titled <coughs> "Absences" took a different approach. In it, an announcer claims that Grimes, Kentucky's full-time Secretary of State, is campaigning on the taxpayer dime. Grimes still takes her salary while her parking space at the state capitol is empty. And Republicans are not moochers off the taxpayer's dime. They're the biggest moochers. Never. They're the biggest moochers Never. off the taxpayer's dime. Are you kidding me? Being on the dole is is, is there it should be their middle slogan, you know, their primary slogan for Republicans. The narrator intones in the ad over a series of photos of an empty parking space. Hypocrites. The ad comes after a Grimes ad last month titled Where Was He? that accused McConnell of missing hundreds of Senate committee meetings. Ah. Not mentioned in McConnell's spot is that he is apparently still receiving his Senate salary of one hundred ninety-three thousand to four hundred dollars. The man that hardly works at all per month and all he does is obstruct and he's getting paid that much on the taxpayer's dime. And you know how they obstruct? How? By a letter. It's that simple. It's that simple, and he's getting almost two hundred grand of taxpayers' money to just whack off and do this. This is ugly turtle face, bastard McConnell, bitch McConnell, and this is what he's getting two hundred grand a year, not counting perks, for, as well as free of the finest health insurance to boot, and his retirement. Is everything, you know, his nest egg. It's unbelievable. Plus, well, he'll go with the revolving door to some big company which will pay him bucks for doing nothing. Because he's been on the take <coughs> for this long. This is a parasite, if I ever seen one. Two representatives for McConnell's campaign wouldn't say if McConnell was returning his pay while campaigning. Parasite. Okay, there she blew. Political parasite, brother. Political parasite. Oof. Hold on, man. Right. Absolutely. Well, 
on that note, we're done. Thank you. Hey, what's going on? Thank you for joining us for another invigorating, information-packed week of uncensored, hard-hitting truth. We thank you for viewing us, and we'll see you next week. Have a safe week and weekend, because this is Saturday. And uh, enjoy the fall. Autumn's my favorite time of year. I love October. Uh, 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 f autumn contains fun holidays with beautiful foliage, at least for us here in the Northeast. And uh, I love Halloween. I love Thanksgiving. I love the holiday food because I love to eat good food. It's all good. And here's the obnoxious kid on his uh, racing, what is this, motorcycle. A little motor scooter. They don't give a shit. It's like smokers. They don't care about the people around them. You know? Oh, by the way, there were a lot of smokers at that party. But when they were outside, but they feel that because they're outside, it doesn't matter. Uh, well, guess what? If enough smoke outside, it lingers. You can smell it, and it does its damage. Second and it hand. does its secondhand smoke does its damage, right? So we'll see you. Say, say goodbye to these jabronis. Say goodbye, smokers. Yeah, smokers. Unbelievable. This has been a Megalife 21 production.